this Pride, everyone's coming through for the Trevor Project on YouTube Shorts. Join us! Create a short showing how you're stepping up for Pride using the hashtag YouTube Pride Challenge. Come through for Pride on YouTube Shorts. Visit youtube.com backslash pride. following takes place between 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. Events occur in real time. Good morning, everyone. Happy, happy festival. Sorry we were a little bit late. Uh, I was in the crawl space getting the pole. So it was a little, little difficult to navigate through all that. You know, I had to uh, get ready for late, uh, tonight's uh, events later today. Um, no, of course, if you're a Seinfeld fan, you understand the reference. It's Festivus. It's the airing of grievances. It's the it's it's the holiday created by Frank Costanza out of frustration <laughs> that he couldn't get little George his doll. I, I just, I love that episode. I'm probably going to watch it like three times today. As soon as we end the show, I'm actually going to put it on my TV here while I work. So happy Festivus, John. And uh, I'm sure, I'm sure we have no grievances to air today, right? No, none whatsoever. I know you do. I, I'm kind of, I'm not in a festive mood because the holidays, I think as you get older, it's like, okay, let's just get them over with and move on to like January 2nd and then get on to 2022 and then the next two or three months of frigid cold snow up here in the Northeast. You don't have to deal with that. I get that. The what? But yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, I know. What's that? What is he talking about? Freezing cold and snow. You know, what's interesting. I went back cause uh, I have a lot of spare time sometimes, or I have no life, one or the other or both. And I looked on Wikipedia because Wikipedia uh, Seinfeld is one of the few shows where you can go back to every single episode mm. and go on Wikipedia and just like <laughs> reading the plot of Festivus is longer than the episode. <laughs> it, it, it took me like 22 minutes to read the plot. And I was like, because that's the beauty of the show, right? Is that there's 9 million things going on at once. That's, that's what makes that show the best ever that you, you almost forget that. Oh yeah, that was the scene that was in that episode that I forgot about. So yeah, I, I might be right with you today and, Make sure I brush up on Festivus later on. Well, that 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 episode is great because obviously people think of Festivus and everything like that. But this is also the the human fund. Uh, George mm-hmm. trying to weasel yep. out of giving out gifts by giving out a fake, um, you know, fake card. Which again, I, I think is it, it's hilarious and and, <laughs> and his character to a T. And one of the best conversations was, uh, you know, when when Kruger <laughs> Kruger gave George a, a check for $20,000 and him and Jerry mm-hmm. were talking about it. And George said something about, you know, maybe I can, you know, give back. And Jerry was like, why don't you start by giving back that check? <laughs> and <laughs> I, just, I, I, I get a kick out of it every time. Because, again, it, it's just, you know, the all the interconnected storylines um, from, from the, you know, obviously uh, Kruger coming to the house, uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Kramer, you know, going off strike and working at the bagel place and, and yep. Elaine giving out a fake number. And, of course. Until you pin me, George, Festivus is not over. Yes, of course, Frank Costanza, <laughs> giving us the tale of Festivus and how it became to uh, how it came to be. So, uh, great episode, great uh, part of the season, and I, I like celebrating it every single year. Yeah, and that was in its final season, right? Season nine. Yep, yep. One of the last so, episodes you know, too. Yeah, I mean, when people say, "Well, the show lost its fastball in its last year," I'm like, nah, "No, no, really didn't." Their, their last was... their last season was one of their best seasons, and and yeah. you know what? I'm almost actually I gonna I want to bring this up so I have a very specific reference um, because I, you know I, I watch it all the time, and a lot of shows that I like, you know, sometimes you know you you find your bread and butter. There's like a, a good you know the peak period. Like like when I watch The Simpsons, I, I don't generally stray past season like 15. That's like. Mm-hmm. nearly 20 years ago so you know because no. again i will i mean personally i like the uh old style animation uh better than kind of the computer generated stuff we see now because i i feel like it mm-hmm. it, it it takes away some of the uniqueness of of, of the shows and mm-hmm. everything like that now i understand it's a completely far more efficient to to computer animate and everything like that but you know i don't i don't want to go too deep into that topic but that's just my opinion but anyways generally shows like you know 
a lot of shows you're not going to spend a whole lot of time watching the final season, you know, because, you know, most shows kind of tail off, but um, mm-hmm. season nine of Seinfeld, uh, like I said, I'm bringing up the episode uh, list right now. It, it, there's a lot of classics on there, obviously, starting with uh, uh, Festivus, and then you have, uh, it starts off with The Butter Shave, The Voice, Serenity Now, mm-hmm. Um mm-hmm. Let's see, The Betrayal, you have The Strike, which is obviously Festivus, uh, The Wizard, <laughs> gotta mm-hmm. love The Wizard, you know, look, yep. Jerry, it's a wizard, then you got The Frogger, <laughs> The Maid, um, so it, there, there's a lot of really good uh, episodes in that season, so they, they were really hitting their stride, and, and really, I mean, this is a show that, like, you know, I, I've gone back, and I have a more of an appreciation to some of the older episodes than I used to, uh, like, from, like, the first season especially, but this is a show that that really hit its stride second and third season um, with some of the episodes, and it was just really kind of a you know nonstop run until the very end. So um, so yeah, so that's why we celebrate Festivus today. Thank you, Frank Costanza, and um, you know obviously rest in peace, Jerry Stiller. I think this might be his first. Uh, I think he didn't he pass at the end of last year. I believe so. Yeah, let me check that. I know yeah. he. He died within the last year or 18 months or something like that. Um, so I, I think it was a case where, it, yeah, this may be his first year uh, not being able to ce- celebrate um, Festivus. No, no, second. Uh, it was May 11th. May 11th. Of May 11th year. of 2020. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. He, yeah, which, you know, again, he was, uh, I think he was yeah, 93, uh, looks like. Quick math there. Yeah. Off my head. So, um, yeah. He was good in uh, King of Queens, too. Yeah, oh yeah, perfect in that show was the you know. Oh, he look, he, he, was, he was a phenomenal actor. I mean, like that, that's the, that's the great thing about Seinfeld, and one of the things that that always endures about it is like the, the just the the number of characters and great characters, even even mm-hmm. in a pretty limited role, because you know, obviously, most you know, obviously most Seinfeld buffs out there um, know that he wasn't the original. Frank Costanza, you know, and if you, if you have the DVDs or something in it, and this always catches me off guard sometimes because if I don't choose the uh, the remake of that episode, there I, I can't remember mm-hmm. who the original actor is, and I'm, I'm it's just I'm, I'm drawing a blank right now. I know his name, but you go back and you watch that episode with him, and that was the the parking space. That was the first time Frank Costanza made mm-hmm. his appearance, and that was. Yep. Uh, you know, Estelle and her friends were sitting around playing whatever the hell that game was. I, that's a little bit Canasta? too old. Yeah, well, there you go. Yeah, you, I was going to say, that was a little bizarre, too old for me, but maybe, maybe bizarre, not. Bizarre, yeah, yeah, bizarre game that I, I'm even old for me, but I just remember it was this weird game they were playing. Yeah, so, and 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 you get one of this great, the great scene, especially when, when uh, Jerry Stiller uh, takes over the role, where he comes in and he does the, like, the, the hard smack to George's forehead, and, 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 and that gets that gets me every single time. Yep. Like, it, it, it's yep. just, <laughs> the physical, uh, 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 the, the the physical uh, comedy. The um, you know you you fast forward to uh, the, the episode where, where Frank um, is the spy for Elaine because she goes into the the, the Korean mm-hmm. na- nail salon and mm-hmm. obviously he speaks fluent <laughs> Korean. <he> and, does. <laughs> <laughs> I see. I'm just see. This, this is how many times I, I I've seen the episode. I I've run it through my head, and I'm running it through my head currently right now. So, uh, but anyways, I don't want to get too too far off track. It is Festivus. We are celebrating Festivus, and 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 you know what, John? I I do have some grievances. I do. I do have some grievances. Um, oh, I'm sure you do. You have them every day of the I year. I do. So I why do. Not on Festivus. <laughs> you know, I should start celebrating uh, uh, non airing of grievances on Festivus because right. every single just year, one day, day yeah. yeah, exactly. The rest of the, the rest of the time. I'm usually airing my grievances, but no, I look, you know, we, we talk about, uh, you know, it's the end of the season right now. It's getting towards the end of the season. You know, we're obviously talking about the MVP race, which is really heating up. Um, but we've been talking about it for weeks in the sense that like folks out there, whether, whether or not they, you know, a lot of these people that are making these comments and, and putting together these videos and stuff like that, or, and, and, and putting out these like analytics and all that, trying, you know, doing this, that, and the other, they don't have an MVP vote. So the reality of it is they're just speaking, you know, so <laughs> there's not going to be too much impact uh, from their point of view. But but it is a little disconcerting to see so many people take a guy that was literally leading the MVP race for several weeks is has as from the moment the season started until now has led the league in passing and, and uh, passing touchdowns and is on a team that, 
you know, despite the the perception, is one of the best teams in the NFL. So, mm-hmm. all of a sudden, because people have been chomping at the bit to knock him off. I mean, we've we've heard. I mean, how many players have we heard uh, uh, are the MVP favorite over him over the last several weeks? We've heard uh, Lamar Jackson. Remember that? That that feels like a lifetime ago. Uh, mm-hmm. Kyler Murray, even though he missed three games, people were still saying, "Well, Kyler Murray will." No, <laughs> and it's just the list goes on and on. So now we have, uh, you know, he has a, a he, he has a poor game against against uh, the Saints. Um, watching some of that film, John, uh, if you if you want some pure comedy, watch watch Keyshawn Vaughn, <laughs> for instance. I don't know if oh, you just saw, falling just, all over himself. There, yeah. there was one play. It was like okay, two plays actually that that were really, really bad. One was, I think, the one you just referenced, uh, running to the middle of the field, wide open. Brady, a mm-hmm. very simple, you know, throw, dump off to the re- the running back. It's meant to pick up a nice chunk of yards. As he turns, he literally trips over his own feet and lands on the yeah. ground. No one around him. You can you could see Brady's shoulders just slouch after that, like on the play, on the, the all-22. And then, of course, you know, the, the drop, which someone described it as, you know, this is the type of throw you throw your kid when you're trying to teach him how to catch a football. And by that, they meant it was so easy of a catch, such a soft pass for him to catch. We saw Brady kind of just lob it to him like, here you go. <laughs> and he still dropped it. So, um, you know, obviously, you know, at the end of the day, you don't put it up any points. Uh, you know, you turn the ball over twice. It, it, you can't say that was a good game. I can sit there and say that, you know, he certainly was, he was the best offensive player, but in a game you lose 9 nothing. Your your best offensive player, it's not something to write home about. But the fact of the matter is at best Aaron Rodgers ma- matched his performance against New Orleans. So this idea that all of a sudden that, you know, right now this in the moment knee jerk reaction is going to plummet Brady out of the races. It's it's just absurd at this point. Like I think we both agree realistically the race is down to two guys. And not no, not Aaron Rodgers and Jonathan Taylor as as some someone posted today. Um, or, or someone said Cooper Cup, and I'm just like, again, I, I, I appreciate yeah, I don't, what I they're doing. That. It's just, yeah, it's it's silly because uh, you know a lot of this is motivated by just uh, being tired of, of Brady. I, I would, I would listen more to T.J. Watt than Jonathan Taylor and Cooper Cup because the Steelers are seven four and one when he plays, zero and two when he doesn't play, and again, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. But I mean, he he's been just just totally destructive this year, right? Leads the league in sacks, yards for uh, loss, forced fumbles, recovered fumbles. Like if, if there was a, uh, a triple crown for outside linebackers, he'd win it, right? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I can listen to that more. No, to me, it's, it's the two quarterbacks, and it has been for the last month. Um, because, okay, Brady had the bad game against New Orleans. Rodgers had the bad game against New Orleans. Those are usually one-offs with these guys, right? Like other quarterbacks will have multiple bad games, including Patrick Mahomes, yeah. outside of the Raiders, you know, has, has struggled throughout the season um, at, at, at key times. So, yeah, it's, it's the two quarterbacks. But I equate this a little bit again to kind of like a presidential primary, you know, where Brady's been the front runner. You know, he's leading all the polls, and he kind of had a bad debate, right? So now the polls change a little bit, and, you know, there, there might be the uh, Amy Klobuchar, who was in the debate, who did really well, and all of a sudden people are saying, well, maybe she's going to come up the polls, and then – it, everybody kind of gets their senses. Yeah, but th- says, th- no, this would be on the heels of having a great debate because, it, it, I right? Mean, again, it feels like uh, it almost feels like it was months ago, but it was a week and a half ago that Tom Brady beat, you know, helped beat the the, the Colts in an overtime thriller in a game where he was phenomenal, right? And all of a sudden, again, people want to thrust yep. the guy, the the running back in that situation, into the into the race and then of course knock Brady completely out so yeah I, I that definitely makes a lot of sense because again I mean it, it, it's <laughs> at the end of the day you're right I mean they're, 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 these great quarterbacks they're entitled to bad games you just don't get them a lot from Rodgers mm-hmm. and Brady and no you know Brady like I mentioned the other day I don't have the exact number but he leads the league in games uh, of being graded over 80 from so mm-hmm. between uh, uh, the number of, uh, of, of, you know, again, if you, how much stock you put into these numbers, that's, that's on you. Um, I know they're valuable when it comes to, 
you know, this debate and, and this award. So that's why I'm putting some stock into them. But if you think about, if you look at their uh, QBRs, for instance, and I, I, I think if you're going to choose one or the other, QBR or <clears throat> passer rating, QBR is obviously the more contextual. I'm a, I'm number. a, I'm a big passer rating guy. Oh, I, my I, guy I, yeah, well, that. well, passer is <laughs> passer rating so fundamentally flawed, and and I can just tell you right now because it doesn't, it doesn't hurt quarterbacks when they get sacked. You know what I mean? Like right. it, it, it's it's a very raw, you know. X plus Y equals Z type of formula, whereas at least QBR <clears throat> tries to. I mean, they're both imperfect. I mean, we we understand that. There, there there's times where like, yeah, yeah, they're they're all imperfect. I just think that passer rating is is very outdated. Well, thing, it, and and look, I mean, it, it benefits Aaron Rodgers because he doesn't throw a lot of interceptions, but he takes a lot of sacks, and that doesn't hurt him. But what's better though? Isn't isn't a sack better than an interception? In the grand not, scheme of things, not necessarily. It, I mean, I mean, it, de- it depends. An eight-yard loss is better than handing the ball over. Well, I mean, it depends I, I, on where you hand the ball over. Again, I mean, that's the thing. Like, we, we, we don't know. Like, if you if you huck a ball down the field and, and it gets picked off at the 10-yard the line on a third and long, I don't care about that. But if you're, you know, third and five within field goal range and you take a, a seven-yard sack, well, guess what? That's agree. A, yeah, that's a, that's a yeah, lot No, I tougher. agree. I agree with and, that. And, so, but now we have to go through every single – this is what PFF no. does, right? They go through every single play to analyze, I mean, you know, I, yes plus and no. plays, I mean, minus sure. plays. And that's why, and, and you know, yeah, that that's what you have to do. And I'm not saying again, like one of one of the the things that you know Aaron Rodgers does is he does get sacked at a at a far higher rate. And we know why because he holds onto the ball longer. I mean, a lot of these running quote unquote athletic quarterbacks deal with the same thing. Patrick Mahomes, same thing. He gets sacked a lot. Russell Wilson sacked a lot. You know, all these guys get sacked a lot. Tom Brady, the most immobile quarterback in the history of football, according to some has one of the lowest sack rates in the entire, like, how does that add up, John? You know what I mean? So that's, to me, I, I, I believe there's a, I don't know the exact split, and certainly it varies from play to play, because sometimes a sack is, is 100% on a, on a tackle or a guard who just whiffs sure. a block, or uh, say a Devontae Freeman in Super Bowl 51, <laughs> completely whiffing on, on uh, uh, Dante Hightower. Mm-hmm. But I believe more often than not, the NBA Finals are here, and if it's your first time betting on FanDuel Sportsbook, you could bet $5 and get $200 in free bets guaranteed, which might feel a bit like this. But mostly, it feels like this. Sign up for FanDuel Sportsbook with promo code FINALS today. 21 plus and present in Virginia. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable free bets that expires 14 days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See full terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. I, again, because of, I, I believe a lot of responsibility goes into a quarterback that a lot of it has to do with the quarterback. Like, you hold the ball, decisions you make, like, you know, leaving the pocket and running around, like, that's not usually a great decision. It's flashy, and people get drawn and attracted to that. Like, oh, man, look at that great play. Like, what was it? <clears throat> We've talked about this play before. A few weeks ago, Lamar Jackson, during that bad game, where he took the snap and ran back, like, what was it, 15 yards? And like you know, right. was running around like like a chicken with his head cut off, and then just hucked the ball up. And, and thank God Cleveland couldn't play defense because everything about that play, ninety nine point nine percent of that play, was just bad decision after bad decision. Well, guess what? He gets sacked more often because he does stuff like that. So I do put a lot of set. That's why I pass a rating. I'm like, eh, I'm, I, look, you know me. I don't. I don't there, there's not one number that I, I generally latch on to because I just don't believe that anything can can completely sum up a performance of of any sorts. I think there there's good information to be taken from numbers but not as an overwhelming this is that because of this. You know, pointing mm-hmm. to a number or a metric or or formula or whatever. So, um you know, at the end of the day, like it, 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 these two guys are the best two in the league. It's very clear there's a lot of numbers that back it up. But if we're going to sit there and, again, split things down the middle and really kind of get past the surface and nitpick, well, you know, again, I think the guy that's been leading the race for, for two and a half months uh, is still the front runner. And really, when you look at who he has to play, like, I, I kind of I kind of feel pretty confident that he's going to have a pretty strong three weeks. And in which case, John, if you're, if you're a voter, if you're sitting there looking at it and you see, you know, all these great numbers, and then you see a guy throw what 45 46 touchdowns over 5000 yards 
Mm-hmm. It's going to be hard not to give him the nod. And, and again, this isn't 5,000 yards and 30 touchdowns and going 7-9. and nine. This is 5,000 right. yards, uh, nearly 50 touchdowns, and, you know, having four losses going 13-4. and four. Like, that that's an MVP season, and it shouldn't be much oh, of Of course it, it is. I think, I think both guys are deserving of the MVP. I mean, that's probably not the best thing to do when we're doing a show, you know, pick a side and fight about it. But they're both deserving of MVP. And it may be, I mean, they're, they're very close. Even in the betting parlors, they're very close. But it might be Rodgers to lose at this point only because he's got two standalone games coming up. He's got Christmas Day against Cleveland, which is going to get a huge audience. Not that the 30 million people that watch it are voting, but the voters will be watching. And then you have the following week, they've got a Sunday night game against Minnesota. So if he has two huge games, he may build himself enough of a lead that he's going to win it. But as you said, Brady's going against Carolina, which does have a decent front. You know, I mean, their, their defensive front isn't bad. Brian Burns made the Pro Bowl, whatever the hell that means. Um, yeah. I mean, Kyler Murray made the, the Pro Bowl over two Matt years, Stafford. Two years in a row, Kyler Murray. Two years in a row. He <laughs> beat up Brady absurd. last year and Matt Stafford. Like, like, he potentially could have beaten out the two Super Bowl quarterbacks. Yeah. I mean, it's not that far-fetched to think the Rams win the Super Bowl. I don't think they're going to. I think it's going to be either Green Bay or Tampa Bay. But if the Rams show up in the Super Bowl, I don't think – we'd be shocked. I mean, it wouldn't be like, you know, the Vikings making it. But, yeah, I mean, he, he beat out uh, Matt Stafford for the Pro Bowl. I'm like, how the hell did that happen? Because he missed three games, and they went 2-1 and one without him. And the three games he came back, they are 1-2. And, and now we're hearing about he's really not a leader, that he's, you know, his body language isn't Cause good. Because it's a popularity and, contest. Well, uh, the kids, <laughs> uh, again, part of the voting for Pro Bowl is fans. The kids love Kyler Murray. Like, mm. they love Patrick Mahomes. I don't think the kids really like Tom Brady or Aaron Rodgers. No, no. Because those guys play a different style of game. They, they may like Rodgers because he's, you know, he'll throw some cool passes and he can move a little bit. Like, I, I remember I gave my nephew, but my nephew's 11 and he loves Patrick Mahomes. Like, every 11 year old kid, I gave him a Patrick Mahomes t shirt at his birthday party and he loved it. You know, he was all excited. Steph Curry's his favorite basketball player. And all the old dudes are there, like, why didn't you get him a Brady shirt? And I'm like, 11 year olds don't really like. Tom Brady, or they don't get him, right? Yeah, or like they don't really Brady, know him. They don't, you they know, don't know him. Yeah. Or, I mean, or they, they, you, if you're 11 watching football, you're not going to appreciate Brady and Rodgers. Like, you're not going to sit there at 11 years old, unless you're an 11 year old Bill Belichick yeah. who was <laughs> watching games back in 1963, breaking down Johnny Unitas. Like, but unless you're a normal, if you're a normal 11 year old, you're probably looking at the screen and saying, wow, look at Mahomes. He's cool. Look at Kyler Murray. He's cool. Like, who are these, who's this guy with gray in his beard? Yeah. You know, and who's this other dude that Making apparently my so easy, father yeah. the, the, Right, so they're, they're not going to appreciate that. Like, like the kids love Steph Curry and Trey Young more than LeBron. Yeah. You know, LeBron, Brady, Rodgers, those guys, they play more of an intellectual game at this point. Well, and also, I mean, like, look, I mean, you're 11 years old, you know, Brady, Brady played. <laughs> if you're 11 years <laughs> old, like, it, Brady was in the league for 11 years prior to you <laughs> being born. So, like, again, it's just, it's a matter of a generation. Age. Yeah, he's, which which he's is fine. He's almost a granddad's age. Like, well, well, and, and, like, here's the thing, though, that and that, that's uh, that's one of the issues is that that, that that type of mentality is fine for kids, but it's starting to seep into, yeah. like, actual media. You know, like, actual, like, you know, maybe folks that are 20 to 25 who it doesn't seem like they're that young, but even that's a – if you're 20 years old, again <laughs> – a significant portion of Brady's career had been played while you were not, assuming you're not, again, like you said, a, a, a phenom like Bill Belichick, um, you, you just weren't able to uh, comprehend or understand. So I understand why, you know, you're going to sit there and, and maybe say, oh, you know, this was always this, or like the people that compare, uh, you know, Tom Brady's touchdowns in his first like 20 games to Mahomes, and it's like... Guys, come on! I mean, it's so easy just to just to put a little context in all of this. So, um, but at the end of the Ian, day, I, I have friends that are thirty, yeah, who are now married with kids. You know, a house, a mortgage, a good job. They're, they're 30, 31 I'm years old. Sorry, <laughs> I feel bad. Well, for no, them. I, I no, I no, I know. Imagine that. That they classify me as one of their friends. They were nine. When yeah. he won his first Super Bowl, so it's like that we, I, he, you, you've grown up with this guy. You know, you, you mentioned the Simpsons, right? How long has the Simpsons been on TV for? Nineteen eighty-nine. Like Thirty. Okay, so thirty-three yeah. years. Like the Simpsons, uh, Tom Brady. If he was a TV show, would be what the Simpsons is just in terms of oh, being yeah. on forever and still being great. You know, I mean, maybe it's not as great now as it was. You know, 
20 yeah, years ago or 20 I, I, years ago. Well, that's, but you that's, get my point, though, right? Yeah, it's just I was like going to say, even, like, even, even Tom's outlived that. It's like, we're, what, what's a show that know, was right, great yeah, for 20 people, years? <laughs> right, like, like Gunsmoke or something? Yeah. Like, I don't know. Um, but whereas, like, Seinfeld is Michael Jordan, right? Yeah. It was nine yeah. years, and oh, my God. But, but Jordan... But Jordan also, I mean, Jordan was great the moment he stepped on the court, but he didn't start winning until his, like, seventh or eighth year. But that ga- that eight-year period where he won six championships, you know, and then missed a year, that's Seinfeld. Like, it was just like, oh, my God, this is just something we've never seen. It's better than everything else. Yeah, and yeah, and Joel brings up a great point. Tom Brady has been on longer than most TV shows. Uh, <laughs> certainly longer than that. Longer than yeah, that eighty show. Network. Remember that one? <laughs> that oh yeah, yeah, show. yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a what a what a what a horrible horrible idea that was. Um, but yeah, it, it's you know. So I guess my my overall grievance is just how how this is covered because like you know at at the end of the day, I don't think that voters are going to have as much of a you know look at me type of reaction to this race. I mean, you're going to get a few of them that are probably going to, you know, uh, vote, you know, in that mentality. But based on some of the conversations I've had, John, let's just put it that way. Uh, it seems like there, there's more of a bigger picture view of all this. You know what I mean? Like you right. can't like people say like, Oh, well that happened in the, well, no, no, it matters. Like the, the first week matters. I mean, again, Tom from the get go was, was, was really great. And like, honestly, I don't, no, if I could, I I don't think he's had a like I said. I mean, I'm not going to sit there and say he had a good game against uh, the Saints when you when you get shut out nine nothing. I, I don't care what the circumstances are. You're not, you know, that's not a game that's going to go on your highlight reel film. But I can also sit there and 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 look at the decision making, and and that that's the stuff of you know the type of things that I want to see. I want to look at decision making. I want to look at the circumstances. Well. Tom was throwing the ball really well, and we we talked about it the other day. I mean, I, I don't think I've seen Rob Gronkowski play a game that bad in my life. Like he just looked like he was going through the motions, which which that's not Rob Gronkowski, I, and I'm not no. I'm not concerned long time to- long long term or anything like that. Um, you know, obviously we've already talked about Keyshawn Vaughn. You lose uh, Chris Godwin uh, early on. Mike Evans obviously doesn't return, and you know it is what it is. You have to deal with what you got. They didn't put up any points. They deserved to lose the game. He should be, you know, again, he shouldn't be praised for that. But, again, if you're going to sit there and say, like I saw, like, you know, our, our favorite, you know, what is it, NFL memes or whatever. It's like, oh, you know, throwing the the um, the tablet was his best throw of the night. And I'm like, I mean, <laughs> again, this is kind of like surface joking because, I mean, half their jokes aren't really even that good. But uh, the, the point being, like, if you actually watch the game, you, you realize, like, no, he, he actually was throwing the ball well. Like, when I get concerned is when I don't see him throwing the ball well, which is very rare. There's been times, mm-hmm. sure, you know, in his career where you sit there and you're like, wow, you know, he's just not throwing the ball. No, this wasn't a case of, of him not throwing well. So even in his bad game, he wasn't bad. Like, he didn't cost the Bucks a win. You know what I mean? Like, there, there were, uh, I think, uh, you know, on the list of things that went wrong for that team, I would say he was at the bottom of the offensive list. But, again, he's not going to get credit for, for that. That's that's not what we do here. We just sit there it's and It's just put a things... bad matchup. Too, it is, it is. I mean, all, especially I, the Saints defensive line against the Tampa Bay offensive line, right? I mean, I, the Tampa Bay offensive line is outstanding. And, and look, a lot of those guys are going to get paid because of Tom Brady. Three of them are going to the Pro Bowl, and part of it is because they've got that guy behind them putting them in the right place, right? So yeah. um, they're going to make a lot of money off of that. Good for them. There's been a lot of people that have made a ton of money off of Tom Brady, you know, from Charlie Weiss on to whoever. But, um, yeah, I mean, the, the defensive line dominated that game. It's just it's just a tough matchup for them. And and I'm, I'm not joking when I say I don't think he likes playing at night. I really don't. I mean, it's just like, like I don't want to leave the house after like 5 o'clock anymore, <laughs> especially in the winter when it's dark out and it's 12 degrees out. And, and, you know, he's, he's kind of got the same mentality of us. You know, I'm really an old guy. You act like an old guy. And I think Brady's really set in his ways, right? I mean, I, I don't think he... Yeah, I, I'd, know, like to say, I, I'd like to say I'm much. set in my ways. That, that's, I prefer that. I'm set, I'm set in my ways. I'm set in my ways. I feel very think, strongly I, about the things I feel yep. strong about. Or, or you just are like, I'm staying in tonight. Like, I, unless, you know... Yeah, but, I, greatest but say, or, I, I, was, I was like that when I was like... 25 you know right yeah <laughs> like, I was so far it's, behind not, you there, it's yeah. not it's not that much different <laughs> I, I don't even want to i don't even want to chalk that up to getting getting older um no 
But I, I think he I, I, it could just be a case where he just does like night game, really. Like it gets him out of his comfort zone of, of what he likes to do, you know, family. Do it gets him out of his routine? So I don't. No, like I, we well, always. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if it's so. Up, I don't know if it's so much. Can, well, the but Super Bowls at night, he seems to. Yeah, be I mean, well but, and, and then it's so. like Sunday night football. He's fine, and Monday night football. He's fine. I, I think it's just the Saints. It's a bad matchup. I think it is not not just yeah. for him though. Not just for him. I think you know the entire Bucks team just just tightens up for whatever reason. Yeah. They just don't play because, like, again, remember last time they played, Tom was great. He was great against yeah. the Saints. He threw four touchdowns. He was he was really, again, slicing up this defense as much as he could. But the the, the rest of the team just wasn't like the defense was. That was one of their yep. worst defensive games uh, from start to finish. So, um, so yeah. I mean, I I don't I don't know if it's so. I, I don't know if it's time. I I think it's again. Sometimes it's just the bad matchup. I think also too like. Look, you play uh, you, you play the Saints in the very first game of the season that you play last year, which, again, is, was the <laughs> first time this team was together with Brady with no preseason or anything like that. So I don't know how much stock I necessarily put into that. The, the, the beat down in the middle of the season, again, I, I again – how do I explain that? I, I can't, you know, like you don't say, you know, there was no trend that indicated that was coming or there's no trend afterwards that indicated that had any staying power. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. sometimes I just chalk that up to like ch- crap happens. You know what I mean? Like, right. You, yeah. you can't explain I mean, it. A... And, uh, you know, like I said, it, it, it's, it's, it's unfortunate. I, I equated the saints to very much like the dolphins, uh, got, got a little, little pushback because, they didn't understand that. Um, the, yeah, dolphins, the dolphins never. The dolphins never went four and zero over a two year stretch against. The no, Patriots. but but like, I mean, but but he. They would give him. They would give the Patriots and, and Brady issues that no other team could really. I don't even want to say consistently because obviously there's been times he's torched them. But like, look, I mean, he was four and one against the Saints with the, with the Patriots. You know what I mean? Right. Like it's just sometimes a, a, this divisional matchup. Um, Obviously, and I, I this was one of the things that really pissed off Saints fans when I said it. Like I, I, I equated both the Dolphins and the Saints to uh, acting like they won a Super Bowl when they beat them. And and yeah, it's a little bit of a knock, but are are, are we going to sit here and pretend like the Saints didn't hold this game uh, on a much higher pedestal than probably the, sure. the Bucks did? Like this was the Saints season, right? They got the sweep, the Buccaneers. I mean, I like. I, I almost, I don't want to say it. Like, and they're still, they're still alive for the playoffs. They, they are. I think if the season ended today, they're the seventh seed. Yeah, but would play at unfortunately Dallas or whatever. For, unfortunately for them, the season still has three weeks to go, and they're, they're going to have to keep pace. right. Yeah, and um, Taysom Hill is still the quarterback. Yeah, last and, time and, and you know, let's let's not pretend like that offense was anything to write home about. It was oh, awful. I mean, god, 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 awful. But um, or Alvin Kamara, though. I mean, great running back playing in a horrible offense right well, it, i mean you know it, a guy look they, they got some talent on that team but you know like i said at the end of the day the saints played that game like it was their super bowl it's like yep. i mean I, if it weren't for the fact that he was you know again perennial walter payton man of the year and one of the more you know charitable players cameron jordan it would just be annoying as hell because like the guy the guy talks quite a bit for not necessarily having like he's a phenomenal player i'm not saying that he's not yeah he's, but, he is a phenomenal he, i mean yeah he, he kind of acts like aaron Rodgers in the sense that like he talks like well, he, he has a few championships in his he, back pocket he's the cow he's went to cow yeah well okay there you go that actually makes a lot he of went sense to cow. yeah so they're like, buddies actually they're good buddies well and but, like yeah no i but he is very good i mean i think he made the all decade team which you know for a defensive lineman that's a pretty good accomplishment he, he i'm i don't want to talk hall of fame about anybody but i mean he's kind of isn't he kind of like to Brady what Jason Taylor was? Like Jason Taylor was the one guy who seemed to do really well against the Patriots. Now it's not all Tom Brady. It's not Tom Brady's fault that they couldn't block Jason Taylor or that he had some big games against the Patriots. And Jason Taylor was really good. And Cam Jordan kind of has that same type of thing, you know, all decade team member. But I, I think he's, he's more. I'm, I think he's more Terrell Suggs than Jason Taylor. It could be. Yeah, like, like I, I be. think between obviously between Brady and Taylor, I feel like there was a there was a mutual 
respect and admiration right. for yeah. what, I mean, again, I mean, Brady advocated for Jason Taylor many times for Hall of Fame uh, candidacy. Yeah. So uh, yeah. I don't think that's the case here. I think this is like another one. Of, like I said, you know how Terrell Suggs was like, Yo, I hate you. You're Tom Brady, blah, blah, blah. And, 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 right, and, right, and, yeah. and, and the arrogance got on the field. And, and you saw it on the field from time to time. And they chirp back and forth. And you don't necessarily see that quite a bit. But you see it between the two of them. And, you know, again, it's... It, when you when you get sacked, Brady's if not afraid to chirp back and forth. That's what no, makes he's him not. He's as not great as he is. He's he's, he's that guy. And w- th- again, that's a compliment. Yeah, you know, and, he's and, not he's not frightened of anyone out there. No. That's why he's oh, the greatest God, no. player ever. Yeah, so I mean, that's that's what makes him really special. I mean, I think if you chirp at certain guys, they might you know just turtle. E.g., <laughs> it's like as they were saying on the broadcast. I don't know about pulling on Superman's cape if that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Well, hey. Gotta gotta love a little Jim Croce reference, but uh, actually, I wish I had yeah. that queued up. You know, like ding, ding, ding. okay. You know what? Uh, <laughs> I think it's time. It's almost time to say goodbye because uh, I do want to go watch Festivus. I do got some work to do. You know? Oh yeah, I do things other than uh, just sit here and talk to you, John. Um, really? But it, no, not really. I, I don't. I mean. Uh, actually, I mean, maybe if it folks on camera or watching on camera will see that um, I accidentally wink, wink, left my uh, Spider-Man mask out. So please Ooh. don't draw any conclusions about what I do at night. Um, please, <laughs> I'm begging you, don't spread the rumor that I am actually Spider-Man. I swear, mm-hmm. I would, I would not like it. Wink, wink. Um, Interesting. <laughs> no, I just realized it was hanging up over my head. So if anyone's wondering, yes, I am the Spider-Man. Uh, no. Anyways, ha- happy Festivus, everyone. Um, we may or may not be on tomorrow. I don't know yet. We're going to figure it out. It kind of depends on the scheduling. But if we are, we will give our picks tomorrow. If not, keep an eye out on uh, social media. We'll probably tweet them and, uh, you know, post them uh, as we do most weeks. So, everyone, have a great day. Have a great Thursday. Enjoy the holiday weekend if you celebrate. If not, stay warm, stay comfortable, and uh, and just enjoy these next few days. Have a great one. We'll talk to you 